Baby, I'm the gamble of your life Why you always gotta think twice? We could go at it all night Till the morning till you can't even go no more the Green Bay Packers have not lost since the Week 12 debacle at San Francisco. They're a much better team than yes, they were definitely. way back then, even though on the calendar it wasn't that long ago. Feels like it was. My question, are they better equipped to handle what's going to happen up front here with San Francisco? Well, that's the million-dollar question. You're right. I mean, I think that's the first thing you want to question. Now, one, it does help that you saw them already, I think, to know what to expect. Like, whoa, DeForest Buckner is big, and Eric Armstead is big, and Nick Bosa is fast. Like, to have that, like, okay, we've played on the road in this environment and know what their speed and physicality is all about, I do give a little advantage to Green Bay, at least this time around. Not to say that they're going to block them every play, but at least to know what to expect. The issue they had more than anything here, Paul, in this game, I mean, yeah, the front four, super talented, as you know, anybody watching football knows, D4 didn't even play in this right. game. All right, so that's scary. All right, I'm sorry, Aaron Rodgers. Balaga Rogers. didn't. Balaga got didn't hurt, yeah, yeah, and then didn't play either. He got hurt early on in the football game and had to come out. But their biggest issue was – passing of stunts and twists and things like that. That is something they're really going to have to work on. Whether it was stuff like this where Nick Bosa went in and the deep tackle looped out and he went out and he looped in, whatever it may be, there was a lot of different combinations of how they did it. Sometimes it was these two guys going this way and this guy wrapping around and that just going like that. Green Bay had a number of issues as far as how to switch it off and how to pass it off. And I think one, because they were a little caught off guard, one by how loud it can be in that stadium and then two the speed of the front itself you know it's hey it's one thing one week if you're kind of kind of a big lumbering defensive line the next week all of a sudden you're going whoa they're flying around and I just don't know if they were ready for what they were getting ready to play here in San Francisco yep and so it's it's a better Aaron not only because his line is protecting him yeah, a little better there's definitely. more Aaron Jones yes there's more Devontae Adams yes I think that's the big thing and you're right it's a better it's better Aaron's altogether right? yeah I mean it's both of them their run game is better now than it was then I think Rodgers will be more prepared for what he sees and one thing I'll say like hey the 49ers a lot of times they're not going to be outnumbered in the run game they're really not I mean as you can see here it's four down linemen here's three linebackers they got Richard Sherman right here. I mean, Jimmy Ward looking to come down and do something as well. And the thing that jumps out to me more than anything is like Green Bay, they're in two tight end set here. You know, you, you can't let them play you this way. You really can't. And what I mean by that is you can't let this linebacker who's supposed to be responsible for Devontae Adams in the flat be in there as a run game support guy. If he's going to do that, then you got to mess with them. Mm -hmm. And then and this play they do. You, you know, you run a little bubble out there, have this guy go down and block him or run him off in a slant route, something like that. But these are cheap ways not only to, one, get a cheap completion and some yards, two, slow down the aggressive nature of the defensive line, tire mm -hmm. them down. Think of your Nick Bosa. Oh, Aaron Rodgers. Oh, it's a bubble. Huh. Aaron Rodgers, one of the greatest things he does, as you know, we were both quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. He's got one of the quickest releases yeah. we've ever seen. So he can get the ball from shotgun snap or snap underneath the center and get the ball out here to wide receivers and screens faster than anybody in the history of football. That's one of his great strengths. And I think this is something they can look to use in the game. Let's go to the next picture just to see what, what happened here. See what happened here? You had the linebacker who was kind of getting nosy with the run game, right? He was kind of just like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm worried about the slot receiver. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And he's really just worried about the run game. And, oh, they're going to run it. They're going to run it. They're going to run it. And then they throw it out there, and he's at a disadvantage. So, I mean, here you got. You got Devontae Adams, right, who we know is a pretty special football player. You got one-on-one -on -one blocking here. And now you got that middle linebacker we talked to, or that weak side linebacker out here chasing him. Like, no way. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, and as you goes, goes ahead. Go ahead. There ends up being a a penalty on the play because Devontae Adams like gave a guy a shoulder on the That's out of bounds right. and yeah. they called it back which was like over refereeing but as you see it's a 10 yard gain and an easy way to do it and I think if Green Bay's smart Look, I don't expect them to be able to just run it down the throat of the San Francisco 49ers all day long. I don't. The 49ers are just, they're too talented up front. Right. They're fast. They're physical. They know what they're doing. I think it's little things like this, bubble screens, little wide receiver screens out on the edge, take away the aggression. I think it's a good way to get cheap yards to the Green Bay Packers, and they're very good at it. Now, the other thing that's worth mentioning, let's go back to the first picture, is Here's another thing I got with, with the San Francisco team. And, you know, specifically Devontae Adams, really to him, but 
the the 49ers traditionally okay they want to play some form of single safety defense they want to play either straight man to man with a safety in the middle of the field or they play three deep where this guy goes there and he goes here and he's in the flat and he's here and he flies out here to the flat and he comes down in between them both and then this guy's in the middle to me one of the weaknesses of the san francisco 49ers are their corners they are they don't, they're not great man-to-man -man corners. They have issues there. This guy here, number 12, is one of the greatest throwers we've ever seen in the history of football. He can throw the ball outside the numbers, comebacks, out routes, deep curls, whatever it may be. To me, that's one of the areas they attack with the 49ers. Whether this is Mosley or a kill Witherspoon down here at the bottom of the screen, I think it favors Green Bay, especially if it's the matchup they want. Whether it's Devontae Adams on Sherman mm -hmm. or whether it's Devontae Adams on Mosley, you know, I'm going to pretend. Like, if I, I would want to see a whole lot of this. I want to see out. I want to see curl. I want to see deep comeback. I want to see just a straight go route as I continue to go here. If they just do those type of things and then also could play a game of slant with them and then slant right. return and then maybe slant and sluggo, you know, that to me is a part where people are not attacking the 49ers. Green Bay, don't be afraid to just max protect everybody, keep them all in the block and just go, hey, Aaron, we just want you to drop back. We're going to block and keep a six or seven or eight man protection and let our best player beat not their best player. Right. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And he's certainly capable of doing that. My mind goes yeah. to Devontae Adams with what he's done. You look at two of their last three games. Yeah. The big win at Minnesota against the Vikings. Right. The huge win last week against Seattle. Yep. Over 20 catches yes. for Devontae. So they have to face him differently than they did in this win. What do you think they do with him? Yeah. Who do I they put on him? They're going to, oh, you know, they're not a team that really like matches up and plays man to man that way. You know, more times than not, Sherman stays on this side, Mosley stays on that side. If they do, if he does come over, mm -hmm. you know, I'm guessing we're going to see Richard Sherman on Devontae Adams when they do play man to man. And Devontae Adams is a really good route runner. You know, his speed is not Tyree Kill or anything like that, but it's still good enough to beat you down the field. Right. I feel like he could have his way with Richard Sherman and turn him around a little bit. One thing Richard Sherman at this age of his career, he's still really good, don't get me wrong, but like he would be what we would call not great in transition where, okay, he's going like this and now Devontae Adams runs the comeback. He's not the best at like sticking his foot in the ground and driving on the ball. No, that's not his cup of tea. That's mm. not. He's long. He's a little bit more of a like gain, gain speed kind of type of runner where I need to run a few steps to get up to full speed. He's not the type of guy that's just going to plant his foot in the ground and you're going to be like, whoa, look at that explosion. That's unbelievable. That's not his game. He's big. He's physical. He wants to jam me at the line of scrimmage and then get back and not let you run a go route over the top of him. That's yeah. really what it is. Right. Seattle, that's why they call it the cover three press bail. He wants to go boom and back off and go, nope, you're not going deep. And they're basically saying, hey, if you want to run a combo, back a deep out any of that that's there to be had right but you know are you gonna have the guts to throw at me all game long and are you gonna wait for the receiver to get 15 and 20 yards down the field because can you protect long enough to wait for wait for those routes happen hey those are all big ifs but I do think that they played once already they know what to expect they have experience against this scheme they just played Seattle who plays the Seattle scheme of course mm -hmm. and Robert Sala comes from Seattle and this is the Seattle scheme once again so at least there's going to be some comfort with the system they're playing to and what to expect there what's the best thing they could learn from mistakes Seattle made trying to stop Rodgers and Adams oh oh the yeah the the I think you know being careful about playing man-to-man -man against Devontae Adams I think you got to be very careful of that, especially when he's in the slot. You know, they they have a number. Because his big plays came against man last week. They right? did. They were all yeah. man to man, or like at one point they played man here and man here, and they tried to make it look like let's. This was the first touchdown. Devonte Adams was out here. Mm -hmm. I can't. Remember, I think this was Geronimo Allison. They tried to make it look like it was going to be slant and flat like that, right? And the corners were going to pass it off. This guy was going to take the outside guy, and this guy was going to wait for the inside guy to run, right? They were going to pass it off is what we call it. But Green Bay, and knowing that, they faked it. They went, oh, I'm not going. See ya. And this guy went, oh, I'm not going. I'm going back that way. And Seattle got caught in passing it off, and then there was no one to pass off to, and they right. got burned for a touchdown. Right. So I would always say, hey, the two guys, we know Rodgers is awesome, but then 
It's Aaron, the mm -hmm. other Aaron, and Adams. Those are the guys you've got to stop. If I'm San Francisco on big third downs, things like that, I'm doubling Devontae Adams. And will San Francisco do that? I don't know. You know, the Seattle scheme, once again, they don't do things like that all the time. But I would say in a game like this, hey, Aaron Rodgers, hey, Matt LaFleur, prove to me you can beat me on third down without, without, other than Devontae Adams doing right. it. And I would question that. I don't know if they can. So that's something to look for. 49ers offense against the Packers defense. I've been paying attention to Chris all season long. I know that Kyle Shanahan is going to have some specific, very well-designed plays just to go against the Packers D. That puts the onus on Green Bay defensive coordinator Mike Pettin. Right, who Kyle Shanahan has history with. He worked under Mike Pettin right. with the Cleveland Browns. So he's going to know some of his tendencies. You, t you hit on it, too. The 49ers, Shanahan. I mean, they're famous for being able to draw up big plays to expose a defensive scheme. And the 49ers thrive on big plays. That's what they are. They're a big play offense. You go back and look at their year and scoring drives. It's not a lot of like 10 play 80 yard drives. There's a lot of like four plays 80 yards, five plays 80 yards, three plays 65 yards. Because Shanahan is, he's the code cracker as they call him. He will break the matrix and figure out what you're doing. And to me, this play reeks of that from week 12 and this long touchdown pass to George Kittle. And why I say that, because what Shanahan does a lot of the times, and where this is real important, is when he gets into a personnel set or a formation, and he goes, oh, I know what they're going to line up to. He's going to go into the lab with a pen and a pad <laughs> and get his damn label off. Okay, that was, um, that was uh, Dr. Dre, in case you didn't know. All right, okay, yeah. But he's going to do that. And he's going to come out of that lab with a few plays that are just going to be like, hey, up yours. This one's for 50. This one's for 40. And if you're not careful, uh, it'll go and be a touchdown altogether. So with this here specifically, I guarantee whether it was through film study of this year or his history with Mike Pettin, that he had a good idea of what Green Bay was going to line up in here. Now, I just want to show everybody what this play is going to be uh, right off the bat. It's going to be a little fake here. Garoppolo is going to wheel out, set up for the bootleg, okay? Kittle is going to run down and run like a corner route and then take it to the post. Now, the big thing is, I would say 99% of the time with teams running a bootleg to this tight end, he runs the actual corner route. And I bet you that's what Kevin King has seen all year from just about every team. Yes, especially when there's some routes underneath it. That are setting it up. Exactly right. And what happens here is Richie James Jr., he comes in with the speed sweep. He comes out in the flat. And then it's like this. Right. And my point being, okay, that most bootlegs all year look just that way. Where, okay, yep, oh, yeah, I've seen this. I mean, Aaron Rodgers does this to us in practice three times a week. And we saw this in training camp. And teams do it all the time. Oh, oh, but that's right. Kyle Shanahan knows what you're going to line up in. And he knows he's going to stress it. It, so then he's going to tell Kittle to go to the post. And that's where it's dangerous. And my point being for this is, one, yeah, the 49ers thrive on big plays. Two, Mike Pettin. You, you got you to gotta self-scout thyself, as we talk about on the podcast a lot. You got to. Because if Shanahan knows what you're going to line up in, he's going to come with an array of plays, and he's going to break the matrix and screw over your defense. Let's go to picture number two just to, to show what happens here. So you see the bootlegs coming, right? Okay, here's James Richard, Rich, uh, Richie James Jr. in the flat. There's, you know, here's Jimmy Garoppolo in his boot. Here's the backside crosser. And this guy's screwed because he's like, oh, I know what the play is. I know what the play is. They're going to, you know, Kevin King's got the guy that's running to the corner, and now I'm free to jump the, mm -hmm. the, the crosser. And that's what he's doing. He's starting to attack the crosser. And as you see here on the bottom, Kevin King's got outside leverage, right? He's expecting, oh, man, this guy's going to, like, run right into me. This will be perfect, right? Yeah, no, it will not be perfect because as you go to the next the next picture here, you're going to see that Kevin King now is facing the wrong way because Kittle really got him to lean and turn himself to go to the corner route, and now he's crossed his face going that way, and you can see Kevin King's in the position like this, and now he's going to have to turn to right. try to react, and then that's night-night, and it's too late, and there's just nothing you can do about it at that point. And then Jimmy G, as we know, he throws a strike down the middle of the field for a touchdown. Now, one thing that can save them a little here on this play in general, just with the way this is coached, right? Like, 
you know, what they're a little worried about is like maybe the backside tight end or the running back coming up this side, right? You've seen people do that. Well, the linebacker's there. He's there. Don't worry. Jair Alexander, just in case you get caught in this coverage again, there's nothing for you to worry about here. Right. Your job is to now, that safety that we saw cut here, his job is to replace him deep in the middle of the field. But Shanahan runs so many of these plays that come back the other side too, and he's seen them on film, to where he's been scarred by that and maybe forgets what his rule is within this defense. But either way, do we have another picture? I think we do. It's, it's, it's George Kittle hitting his head on the goalpost, right. okay? But you could see Jair Alexander has realized it, but he's too late. The ball's about to hit George Kittle's hands, and he's going to run in there for an easy touchdown, and that's night-night Green Bay. That would have been a pretty veteran move for a young guy like that to recognize and fall off. It would. It would. You're exactly right. It's a veteran move. And yeah. then Jair Alexander's in his second year. I can promise you this guy's really talented. He's one of the best corners in football. He's smart. He'll get it this time around, but hopefully he doesn't have to get it. Right. Hopefully Mike Pettin changes up his plan of attack a little bit to slow down Kyle Shanahan and his genius in, in, in creating these big plays going back to the middle of the season as we kind of got used to watching the 49ers offense and the things they were doing in addition to these I don't want to call them trick plays but wrinkle plays yeah. that were put in often for a specific defense Jimmy Garoppolo I think I said this to you sometime in November yeah. I really like the quick release over the middle and right. how accurate he is with those quick slants sure. and the 12 yard in routes uh, maybe doing it a little bit too much now I think that's a fair point you know I mean first off let's look at his numbers all right there you go. I mean, NFL rank. This is between the numbers, right? So the middle of the field. The 49ers, you break down Jimmy Garoppolo and company in the offense. You watch the first matchup. You watch last week against Minnesota. The majority of the throws are right down the middle, right down the pipe there. There they are. And if I'm Mike Pettin in Green Bay, I'm going, no way you're throwing them down the ball in the middle of the field. Let me see Jimmy Garoppolo and prove to me, like I was saying, what I want Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams to do because I know Aaron Rodgers can do it. I don't know about Jimmy Garoppolo. Can Jimmy Garoppolo beat us by throwing 10-yard out routes, 15-yard out routes, 20-yard out routes, comebacks, things like that? I don't know. He never really has to do it. You're right. He's got a quick release. He's great over the middle. Very accurate in that, in that range as well. Yeah, very accurate. Think about how many of those big plays came because he hit him in stride. That, exactly right. Just took no off. doubt. Let's go back to the picture, Pete, and I'm going to just like just give a little example. Like, yeah, this is what Shanahan is like a master at. Oh, quick little fake here. Right. Boom. Oh, this guy came up through the middle here, and it's, you know, we created a hole between because this guy reacted to the run fake, and now there's a hole to hit him over the middle. Uh, whatever it may be, he's great. Oh, you know, play action set up, and here's this guy and this crosser and this guy in a deep crosser with this guy running the post over the top. The, my point being, most of the times, it's going to end up back in the middle of the field where the play. Right. And if you're Green Bay, yeah, I don't want to get stuck in man-to-man -man a whole lot. I would want to find zones where, yeah, guys are staying here towards this middle of the field here. And whether you want to blitz somebody and replace it with another guy, whatever, I would just play bodies in the middle of the field. Very similar to me, actually, to this. I'll say this. When Mike Pettin was on Rex Ryan's staff from the New York Jets, mm -hmm. they kind of figured that out with the New England Patriots during that time and they were one of the first defenses to slow down Brady with all the Wes Welker and Julian Edelman's throws over the middle because they finally just said man forget all these plays and motions and everything the ball is ending up right here yeah. so let's stop like ch chasing the fire trucks and the window dressing right. and just drop people where we think they're going to attack at the end of the day right. and I think you can put some weight into the fact that the 49ers are going to attack somewhere in between those hashes oh, yeah. I mean, right there off of the play action I yes mean, here here it's going to be some form of quick slant or a deeper dig route no doubt to your about point, it. it's going to be somewhere in the middle somewhere in the middle is this still a thing i mean michigan used to do this all yeah. the time yeah. can, can this guy just come and hang out here he definitely can, can. He rob and, and these guys drop back a De little bit definitely yes there's lots of ways to do what that. are they giving up where are they making themselves vulnerable if they do recognize that and say, you know what, we're going to have a guy right in here the entire game? They're calling their bluff, and that's what I think they should do. They're calling their bluff to go, I don't think he'll throw this route. I don't think he'll throw that route Which, out there. Which, as you pointed out, they haven't, they haven't they done that They don't do it. Of. That's what I mean. So, you know, again, this I would err if I'm the Green Bay Packers and Mike Patton and going, going to crowd the middle of the field somehow, some way. If I'm playing zone, yeah, I have a lot of zone droppers there. To what you're saying, if it's man-to-man, -man, you know, maybe this guy 
goes deep. This guy's a lurker in the middle, like one rat, right? And then everybody else is man. But you got somebody there in the middle of the field to read the quarterback's eyes. Oh, he's looking over there. Boom, I'm over there. Oh, it's back the other way. Whatever it may be. But I think these are uh, little points that jump out to me if you want to slow down the genius of Shanahan and like all their play action and pop passes they get over the middle. You called him a rat? A rat or a robber, or a depending robber. which yeah. way it came from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>